put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. The sixth day mood review. We are in the partially futuristic future. I'm not entirely sure when this is said. I'm not sure it's ever really stated, but apparently in like a DVD documentary featurette thing, Arnie said it was 2015, which I can kind of see. It, you know, the movie came out in 2000, and it does say in the near future. So, yeah, you know, you know how like. X-Men 1 says, in the near future, and then around the time of Days of Future Past, that really came back to bite them, because, wait, how far into the future, just because the end of the Wolverine, it seemed like it was kind of now, like today, but then, yeah, a number of things that this predicts have actually come true, a number of the technologies and such and you know just yeah the, the way things seem to be in this movie in in the reality of this apparently smoking is just plain illegal like even in your own home so yeah like I said a lot of it has come true I'm not even a smoker but it's it has gotten kinda ridiculous how few play, you know recently replayed the, the Punisher video game from 2004 you know, in, in one level, you you know, you can fry a guy in the electric chair and, you know, Frank Castle will, you know, point out the only place in New York you can still smoke. Anyway, we are following Adam on his birthday on the sixth day. Yeah, that's... The, the movie's nice and subtle, like that. It's, to, to be fair, it does tend to be more, yeah, a bit less heavy than, than that, nevertheless. Arnie plays a charter pilot, and pretty much just a, a regular guy, which is always hilarious, you know, with a huge muscly frame and thick Austrian accent, just regular guy. And the, you know, the, they attempted to clone a human being at, you know, in the backstory of this movie. And it failed and they had to terminate. And it, you know, cloning was then made illegal. And that doesn't mean that cloning isn't still being used. And cloning human organs is quite you know, commonplace, and so is cloning pets. Adam, basically his his daughter, his eight-year-old daughter of this, I believe, 53-year-old man, I, it, it happens, I mean, it's, but it's, yeah, it's again a little, you know, no matter, this was before they, they got around to just acknowledging, acknowledging, okay, Arnie is getting on in years, so we can't just pretend like he's still, you know, a 30-year-old. Yeah, he, his, his eight-year-old girl, you know, she, she doesn't know when he finds out, but apparently they have to put it down because it has some disease, and she tells him, go get you know, go get the dog cloned, and he's not real sure about it, but, you know, he still tries to find a way to, you know, get her something for his birthday. Yeah, and then he goes home, and he finds that, the, you know, at, at his home, they're already singing Happy Birthday. Oh crap, now that I said that, do I have to, like, pay? Anyway. 
given that it is copyrighted. And he looks in through a window, and there's a clone of himself with his family. Now, there's there's some total recall right there in that setup, and there's a lot of total recall throughout this film. That is obviously a far better movie than this. And it's, it's pretty clear that they did kind of try to see if, you know, lightning would strike twice in... A decade and you know Arnie is this kind of caring paternal type is a bit forced there is not a lot of screen time devoted to that it's just it's established that you know but yeah it's 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 a little less convincing this is very much a typical Arnie action flake and in that regard you know the the action and such is just so so it's it's not really like if you want to put on a great arnie film this is not going to be anywhere near the top of your list nevertheless it does beat eraser handily and yes the the, the whole you know typical 80s ott action flake kind of thing had gotten pretty old by 2000 and there are a number of elements in this that are you know that we've seen before and done far better however it is actually really smart about the cloning it's very honestly logically and humanely going into the ethical issues of cloning which is a discussion that needs to be had and you know even back in you know 2000 was a discussion because the technology, you know, some of it we have, some of it's right around the corner. And if we do use cloning, it can be incredibly beneficial. However, we also really, you know, can't, we cannot use it lightly because it does really raise ethical issues. It's, you know, just in the interest of full disclosure, I believe we have to be very limited in how we use it, but I do think that perhaps not outright cloning, but at the very least stem cell research, you know, as, as long as it's not turning a sentient being into the means to an end rather than treating them as an end in themselves. And the focus is purely on what can we, you know, what diseases can we cure and, and such. Not like, you know, if we test this stuff on, you know, some something that almost is a human being, maybe we can live a little longer. No, 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 just curing diseases. Is, but, yeah. And the film also uses cloning, you know, it... Yeah, there, there are some some cool things that cloning can maybe do. So Arnie keeps killing the muscle that the you know villain sends after him. And you know the basically they they're not that's not new to them. They're just they're just cloned back to life and that's it. And when they do they are more frustrated at their situation rather than like floored by the you know the existential crisis of this situation that element is a lot of fun and you know they they get some really good humor out of it, very black humor and you know some some find that some say it goes too far the the black humor and it really lightens the heaviness of the, you know, of the subject itself and the, the otherwise handling of, of this. And it, yeah, you know, it, it really does, And, and also, do, do not blame Arnie for the, you know, killing them. They are trying to kill him as well, so it is self-defense. 
and the the movie's PG-13, and you can kind of feel it for an Arnie flick, but it also doesn't mean... It, I don't think this would get a PG-13 today. There are some really graphic shots of violence, and really, the it being PG-13, it is just that thing of, well, instead of bullets entering people's bodies, it's just laser bolts, because, and, and you don't really see any blood, because you can shoot someone a ton of times, as long as there's no blood, it's perfectly alright. And, you know, this has at least one really big twist, and, yeah, you know, you can, you can follow it fine, and, you know, some say it, it makes less sense the more you think about it, I don't know, it, I find that it it holds up quite well. The villain here is quite enjoyable. And this is where I'm going to get into some of the Total Recall stuff. This does obviously not have... Ronnie Cox as the villain, and that is, you know, I mean, you, that is pretty much, it, it doesn't get much better than Ronnie Cox as your villain in an Arnie film, you know, and that, in an 80s film in general, 80s, 90s, and this also does not have Michael Ironside as the leader of the muscle, but it does have Michael Rooker, and yeah, he is, you know, always great in, in this kind of role. And Michael Rooker is actually also in Replicant, which I am getting to soon, since I'm, I'm kind of doing the trilogy of, you know, early 2000s, is cloning scary kind of movies, with the third being Godsend. Why did I do this to myself? And actually, you know, come to think of it, this is just about the only Arnie film that has more than one Arnie. You know, today we also have Terminator Genesis, which at least some of the time does. But, you know, on the other hand, Van Damme, he did a bunch where there are others, yeah. The, I mentioned the, the muscle of the bad guy, you know, being cloned back to life. It's especially these two, like, kind of punk rock kids, you know, a guy and a girl, and he's like, you know, discount Norman Reedus, back when Norman Reedus was actually kind of discount Norman Reedus, and, you know, there's this girl, and she's got, like, completely blue hair, so it's, like, really, clear, you know, yeah, you know, and, and he's also got, like, partially dyed hair, and, and she comes back, and she's like, do you know how much it costs to re-dye my hair? And, like, yeah, just a lot of fun, and, and, like, the guy is just really immature, and, like, it, you know, early on, the you know, they're getting into a car chase, and he's like, yeah, a car chase. Come to think of it, I guess that might be the movie kind of congratulating, congratulating itself on the action scene itself. But, yeah, they're, they're quite fun. And you've also got, this was apparently the film debut of Terry Crews, and he's also one of the muscle, and, yeah, he's, he's quite fun in, in the role. You also got Robert Duvall, who gets to deliver some really meaningful lines, and, you know, kind of mirroring, what is it, James, James Kahn, I want to say, in Eraser. And then you've got this, this really creepy kind of quote-unquote living doll, which, you know, it's, it's kind of like child's play, and it's just this really creepy little thing that just, and, yeah, you know, it's, I, I don't really pay attention to toys, so I don't know if we have something like that, but it does make sense, given what the 80s and 90s were full of, of, like, you know, I watched cartoons, sometimes there'd be, you know, advertisements for, you know, dolls, 
for for girls, you know, for guys, it's action figures, and yeah, you know, it it's like the 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 daughter, you know, it's it's a gift for the daughter, and she like explains it can do all these things. It you know, it grows real hair and all this kind of you know, and he points out, don't your friends grow real hair? Can't they do all sorts of things? But everybody has one, and there's this kind of like hologram girlfriend for his you know buddy who works with him at you know charter piloting and like they're kind of having their cake and eating it too because they keep pointing out how creepy it is but then they also have these ridiculously gratuitous like you know it's it's real male gazy kind of stuff but then they'll also have like really you know <laughs> kind of like self-aware jokes where like you know he he comes home and like literally the first you know she's like I'm so glad you're home I taped all of your sports programs and I thought we could watch them together and then he sits down in the chair and she's like I love how you always sit down in the chair it's the first thing you do when you come home you know it's it's so you know right there as and Apparently, it can like interact with pe slightly because it's yeah. There's like she'll like straddle the guy in the chair, and you know this happens to Adam once as well, and like apparently like unzip, and it's just yeah. That's. <laughs> you know to 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 quote an old sprite commercial you really need a girlfriend you probably need a girlfriend rather and the there's this religious you know there are a few religious fundamentalists there's especially one distinct character and they're they're kind of stereotypical and like really just kind of mocking the the anti-cloning like among the you know when when he walks into repet which is where you get you know which is entirely unlike recall which is where you get you know your pet cloned they're literally standing there as if outside of an abortion clinic and saying like you know, you shouldn't go in there, and, and like, yeah, and although that does lead to, you know, he's, yeah, yeah, they say, God doesn't want you to go in there, and, you know, Arnie responds, then God shouldn't have killed my dog, and the, the guy responds, atheist, <laughs> this is that's not bad, and, and I do want to note that the film really could have gone, like, either really pro or against religion and there is some really they, they talk about do clones have a soul and does you know yeah they, they bring up God some but it never gets heavy-handed it's not I'm not it's not that the movie isn't preachy but it, it, it kind of is but very well-meaning and it does actually you know explain its points it doesn't just say you have to do you know like in like deliver us from evil you know the the by by scott derrickson of sinister in the movie there's like you know the the cop has like is not like really religious anymore and then he encounters this priest and you know he he says something like then you know yeah, it's just they they briefly exchange some some they 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 briefly exchange arguments for and against God. And it's just it's so obviously written from a religious standpoint because this is stuff that any atheist who wants to could immediately shoot down with with no trouble at all. And in this film it actually does 
you know, and yeah, the film is not, you know, the, the atheist crack is, it's not characterizing as though if you were an atheist, which he almost definitely isn't, that that would be a bad thing. You know, it's not specific, and it's not saying all religious people because it's only these fundamentalists, but it it is, you know, borderline too mocking of the, the anti-cloning side, but, you know, especially when there is maybe some violence committed by some of these religious fundamentalists. But Adam is very uncomfortable with cloning, and we empathize with him because he's the protagonist. So, you know, it's not just saying, you know, cloning is fantastic and you should just, you know, go, go out and get clones of everyone, you know. But, you know, it's... It, it has both the the fringe that go really against it, and then it has the people who are just kind of, you know, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with it. So, yeah. And the... There's some pretty cool sci-fi tech in this, and again, you know, I mean... It obviously doesn't anywhere near reach Total Recall, but this is also a more, pun intended, down-to-earth story, you know, where, and, and that is also a huge, you know, Total Recall is supposed to be a fantastical, so, you know, dude literally walks into, you know, walks into Recall and says, I want memories that have me being a secret agent on Mars, I'm gonna meet a hot chick, I'm gonna kick ass. And that's what happens in the film, and then you're kind of left to wonder, wait, did he just get those memories implanted, or is this actually happening? And, you know, it's, so, in in this, it is very much, you know, like, like I mentioned, you know, a big part is that, you know, he sees this clone with his family, and there's this thing of, will his family be safe? And that kind of thing. And I should note, uh, you know, given that it is, you know, it is very much just regular family, you know, sweet little daughter and, you know, loving wife and such. So, unfortunately, you know, there's no badass wife. And, you know, the Roger Ebert pointed out about this that while it's nowhere near the level of Total Recall and Terminator 2, it is still a serious science fiction film. Yeah, you know, when you look at those two movies, the major female characters kick serious ass. You know, there's it's you know, it's it's not just the men who get to be really awesome. The the women do as well. And to be fair, the you know, the the female punk girl is pretty cool. There's nothing like you know, it's not that she's never sexualized. That you know, when when you're cloned, you come back to life, you know, completely naked, and yeah, the the camera leers briefly, and then you know, while it, it you know, while your penis remains incredibly confused, because if we're going by like human years, technically she's born an adult, but she's seconds old when we see her naked, so it's like. Yeah, can't make up my mind. And, but, but, yeah, you know, it's, there's nothing like that she's, like, not as capable because she's a woman or anything, you know. Nevertheless, of course, it is on male terms, you know, it's, it's, the, that the, the women are so masculine that they're, they're as good as the men, but, you know, yeah, yeah, when it, when it comes to, to, strong female characters, especially 80s and 90s and such, you gotta take the victories where you can get them, you know, kind of, yeah. Or you're gonna be really frustrated. But, yeah, among, among the cool science fiction tech, you know, you've got these laser guns and, you know, the transportation means, the, the charter flight thing, this, you know, yeah, they're just, they're, they're really, you know, I, they're probably in the, in the trailers. I'm not really 
you know, guns I can talk, but I, I don't really know a lot about, like, jets and such. But, yeah, they, they, they're, they're really quite cool. And, you know, like, you know, the, the, like, like Total Recall and Blade Runner, which are genuinely adapted from Philip K. Dick stories, in, you know, a Blade Runner's case, even a novel, rather than a short story, this goes into his and mine favorite themes of identity, memory define, our memories defining us, and reality versus perception. And there is a little Hollywood overproduction in this. It, you know, I noted other reviewers saying that they, they almost make it sound like it's really, like, really the only thing is that there are a couple of transitions where it's like really over stylized editing and that kind of takes you out of it. That's all. The rest of the movie, it's just, yeah, it's just an Arnie action film. It's not, you know, it's over the top, but only in the way we want it to be, in the way that makes it fun, not in the way that makes it like look all hip and cool for the young kids. And the the social satire that I've already gone some into is not bad. I I went over the the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes as part of my research for this, and some guy on there was like. You know there are seventy say seven days in a week, right? Or some something along those lines, and and I'm just like, does this guy not know about the Genesis narrative? I mean, not everybody in the world does, but he clearly speaks English. Well, the, the the grammar of his sentence was com completely flawless, which is not true of a lot of English speakers on the internet. So, you know, most English speakers, at least, you know, don't know the basics of the Genesis narrative, so it's a little strange. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.